Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this CG Solit SC530 Automotive System Scanner. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So this lists some of the different things you can do with it. We have oil reset, tire pressure monitors, engine codes, steering angle, ABS bleeding. So this is an OBD2 scanner. And along with just like reading codes and such, this is a bi-directional scanner. Now the functionality you'll get out of this is dependent upon the vehicle you plug it into. Some vehicles are going to allow you to manipulate more things than others. On the back, we have some benefits and features. You can pause and read through those. You can read and clear codes. You can record and play back data logs. And this has lifetime free updates. So you can connect this up to a computer and update it. So let's get it open. So it comes in this nice case. We'll open it up. And here we have the scanner. Peel the plastic off the front. They're tactile buttons. We have a mini USB port on the side. It's like it has an RF sensor on the top. And we have a port on the bottom. That's to connect the OBD2 cable. Also comes with the USB cable. The cable tie here. The OBD2 cable is around 5 foot long. So that will plug in the bottom here. Then I can screw the sides in. So this is powered by your car. It doesn't need batteries. Let's take a look at the manual. So it talks about the warranty. Safety information, we have table of contents. Here's a description. This talks about how to use it. So there are actually two ways this can get powered. You can plug it into a car, or it also gets power when you plug it into your computer for updating. So this gives a little overview of how to use it. Shows some graphs. Looks like it has different language settings maybe. This talks about updating it, okay? So I think this is gonna be pretty straightforward. So if we look at the buttons here, we have three function buttons. We have no and yes. Now these also can be considered like back and okay. We have directional buttons and a question mark in the middle. So I'm going to take this out to my car. We'll get it plugged in and we'll check it out. Okay, so I'm out here at my 2016 Subaru Outback. If we look down here under the dash, you can see in the upper left-hand corner, we have the OBD2 port. So we can plug this in. Okay, so this is booted up. You can see we have different options here. The first is OBD2. So this will work with any car that has OBD2 and you can run a scan on it and look for codes. And then you can see we have some different makes here. We have Chrysler, Subaru, Toyota. So these are special functions that you can do for these brands. So these will typically come with one and then you can go online and you can purchase other makes. Then below that we have settings. So this is not a touch screen. You'll want to use the keypad below. So go down to settings and I'll hit Y to go into settings. And then I've already changed this here. If I go to units, I change this from metric to imperial. And then to go back, you hit N, and we'll go back to the main screen. And then we have data manager and update. So if you hit update and you plug it into a computer, you can update the software in this. So we'll go up to OBD2, start that. Now I'm going to turn the car on. I'm not going to start it. So I'm going to do auto scan. So this is going to figure out what protocol the car uses. So it says MIL status is off. That's the check engine light. It found zero codes. So I can say, okay. So now it has two modules. It says engine and TCM. That's the transmission control module. So I'll hit yes next to engine. And we have different options here. So we have diagnostic trouble codes. I've already done that. We have IM readiness. We have live data, onboard monitor, component test, vehicle information, vehicle status. So if we go to live data, It's going to read the PIDs. We'll hit yes next to all data. And now we can scroll down through here for all these values and we can look at the data. Let's see if there's one I can look at right now. So here's one, the engine coolant temperature is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Engine RPM is zero because it's off. Okay, so I've scrolled down to one here. It says accelerator pedal position D. It says 13%. So I'll press down on the accelerator and we can see this value change. It looks like we have multiple sensors there. So let's exit out of here. We can also go to custom list. And here you put a mark next to the things you want to monitor. So I'll mark engine coolant temperature, say engine RPM, Okay, so I have a couple different things. I'll hit okay. Now let me start the car. And here we can see the RPM. So I'll rev the engine up a little bit. And you can see that change. I'll move down. Let's see if this absolute throttle position changes. You can see that percentage change. And the coolant temperature here is going up. So we can also graph this. I'll hit F2. And we have a graph of the engine coolant temperature 
let's do, let's try multi-graphs. So this is showing coolant temperature and engine RPM. Let's say merge graphs. So this is showing on the same chart. So you can look for relationships between the different values. So I'll exit out of here, turn the engine off. Now let's go to Subaru, I'll hit yes. It says smart VIN or manual selection, I'll choose smart VIN. I'll choose North America, it found the VIN, I'll hit yes. It says quick scan or control modules, I'll hit quick scan. Okay, the scan is complete, so we can go down through this. So this will show some faults. So I'll say read codes. So this is showing history, it says tire pressure low. There was a point where the tire pressure was low, so that got logged in here. So this is an old error code, it's not a current one. So you can also clear codes or look at live data. So if you had a fault, you could investigate that there. Now let's go back and look at control modules. So now we can get into the really specific stuff here. Let's look for, let's go to IPC combination meter. So we have different options here. We have ECU information. So that doesn't tell us much there. Then we have read codes and clear codes. So those are if you have diagnostic codes and we have live data so we can look at live data. But for bi-directional, we'll go to active test and I'll hit yes here. And here we have a number of active tests. So I'll show these on the meter and then I'll show what they're doing. So we have speedometer, so I can hit yes here. And if you see at the bottom, it has different options. So I'll pick one, I'll pick 120 and I'll hit that and it will change my speedometer to 120 miles an hour. So now I'll show the speedometer. So here's the whole gauge cluster. So I'll show you the tachometer, we'll do the same thing. We'll change it to 2000 RPM. Now, if this did not go to 2000 RPM, you would know you have some sort of error in the system. Now it looks like it's just short of the two, but that's parallax error. That's just the angle we're looking at it at. We can also do the temp gauge. That's in the bottom left and we have H lock. So that's going to be pegged all the way to the right. We have H point, and that's going to be the top of the gauge, Z point. So that's the bottom of the overheating. Dial two instruction, so I think that's around three quarters. Intermediate is half. Dial one instruction is one quarter. We have C point is right on the C, and then we can stop. So we can even do things like this color check. So if we look at the middle screen, we can turn that white. We can turn it black, red, color's not coming through on my camera. We can do green, blue, gradient. And then we have all lamps lighted. So that will turn everything on. I imagine on some cars, if you did this, it would show features that you don't even have on your car. But I do think I have all of these features. So you could look and see if you have any light bulbs out using this. Let's look at one other one here. Let's go to body control. Let's go to active test here. And we have some different options. We have lock actuator output. We'll hit start and that locked all of the doors. We'll go back. Next we'll go to all seat unlock. and it unlocked all the doors. So if your switch doesn't seem to be working, you can hook this up, test it out, and you can rule out if it's the switch or if it's the system itself. We also have shift lock solenoid. Let's try this here. Okay, so that unlocked this. Now it's locked again. Normally you have to press down on the brake pedal to unlock this. And here we have the keyless buzzer output. So now we have the tone. I'll stop that. We could even output the horn, which I don't want to do right now. So that's the CG Silhouette SC530 scan tool.
So that just touched on a tiny portion of the capabilities of this device. You can go in and look at specific engine codes, active data. You can look at different temperatures, fuel injectors, things like that. This really lets you tap into all the capabilities of your car. Now it's nice having a scan tool to scan for check engine lights and such, but if you're really getting into repair, it's nice to have a scan tool like this with the bi-directional control. I like that it plugs in and gets powered off of the car. It doesn't need batteries, so it's always ready to go. You can put this in a toolbox you carry in your car or truck. You don't have to worry about batteries going bad and such. I found it also very easy to use. The screen was very easy to read. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.